I have another budget knife I want to share with you today. This is the fixed blade knife from the company Izonda. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this very inexpensive knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I bought this knife myself, and I only became aware of it because of another Canadian YouTuber, Jeff Allen from Off the Gridiron. I'll put a link to his channel at the end of this video. So it asked me one day, had I ever heard of it? Had I ever tried it? And I said, no. He said he had, a, he had one himself. He was quite impressed with it. So I searched it out on Amazon. That's where I purchased it, Amazon Canada for $15.99 Canadian. I, I don't think there's another knife on Amazon that cheap, at least not one that I would want to use out here in the woods. And uh, yeah, so I've been using it for some time now and I thought I could give you my thoughts on it. So what we'll do is I'll just bring the camera a little closer, give you some close-ups of the knife itself, its specifications. I'm going to be doing some demonstrations with it, but I'm going to limit those demonstrations more to carving, not batoning, because this is not a full tang knife. It is a partial tang knife. And to be honest, I have no idea how far back it goes. There's no information from Izonda on it. I expect it's less than halfway. I couldn't even tell with a magnet, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's get started. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, let me share with you the sheath. We'll put the knife down, pull the sheath in. So thermal mast, thermal molded plastic drain hole, thumb push off, little ridges down inside for detention. But what makes the sheath stand out is the belt clip. Well designed for holding onto your belt and rotatable and stiff detents as well. I think that's a nice feature on this sheath. Otherwise, it looks very much like a Morris sheath. Let me grab the knife, put the knife in. Now I'm going to speak to retention. You have to push it in and hear the click. If you don't, it's not fully seated. The retention on this could be a little better. Now, once it's clicked in, it's in far enough. But I found that it takes a little bit of movement to get it in and out. So the retention could be a little tiny bit better. Just something to be aware of. All right, let's take the sheath, put it aside. Let's go over, over some specifications for this knife. So overall length from tip to pommel. 8.8 inches, 225 millimeters. Blade length, 4.1 inches, 105 millimeters. Blade thickness, 0.1 inch or 2.3 millimeters. Weight with the sheath, 3.4 ounces, 96.8 grams. I left steel to the end because I know somebody's going to roll their eyes and I, I don't blame you, but hear me out on this. It's a Chinese made knife using entry level stainless steel 5CR15MOV. Yes, I know it's not a high quality stainless steel, but let's keep in mind, this is a $16 knife, 16 Canadian. You're gonna pay less for it probably everywhere else in the world than Canada. So the price certainly matches the steel, but that's not the only story. It may be a budget steel, but that's not the problem or not the issue. The issue is, does it live up to your expectations? Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. I have been using it. You can see it's nice and dirty. So I have been testing this and I have a little bit of use on it, enough to pass a few comments on about the steel choice itself. Really, it's more about the heat treat than it is anything else. And I can talk to that. All right, let's just go over the design of the knife. So you can see it very much resembles a Mora Clipper with the exception of the handle. We'll come to the handle in a minute. It has a clip point blade. It has a full Scandi ground and it is full Scandi ground. There's only a, not even a real micro bevel on it, more of a polishing bevel on the end of it. The back is fairly sharp. It'll certainly scrape as you'll see when I get to the demonstrations. Um, just very much like a mower, right? Okay, now when we get to the handle, this is where this really shines for me. So the handle is a hard plastic with a rubber over mold, but it's the shape that makes this so nice. As you can see, it has palm swell here and in that dim dimension as well. Otherwise it thins out to either end, just a little bit of a beak at the end, a little bit of guard at the front, and there is a ramp for your thumb just beside the blade here. And it is this tactile feel of this rubberized overmall that really makes it feel. Now remember, I have XL, at least XL, maybe double XL hands, and I, this works for me. Could it be a little bit bigger? Yeah, but you know what? It's a $16 knife. Can I use it like it is? Absolutely, as you'll see, it'll work very well. All right, there's not a lot more to say about the knife. I just want to talk to the company for one second before we start the demonstrations. So the brand name is Izonda. The knife blade is called the fixed blade knife. That's it. When I looked up on their website, I actually had a little challenge to find in this, but it was easy to find on Amazon. The rest of the knives in their, in their uh, lineup, uh, yeah, okay. They're paramilitary, 
G.I. Joe kind of knives. Nothing that interested me. This one did, for obvious reasons. This is the only knife that I found in their lineup that was actually something I would consider. All right, now let's just do a few demonstrations with the knife. All right, very simple demonstrations. As I mentioned when I opened the video up, this is a partial tank knife. I really have no idea how far back the tank goes, so I'm not going to do any batoning with it. It very well could withstand some batoning, but you know what? I don't need to with this knife. I'll, I'll have another knife or, or a hatchet or an axe with me when I take this out. So this is going to be used for crafting, and that I've done a considerable amount of it. So my usual t uh, demonstrations are first to do a little cross batoning to show you that the edge can stand up to that. So I do that with by creating an L7 notch and something that will turn out being a tent peg. So let's start with that and get this thing to stand still. All right. Put my stop cut in. Yeah, that's about a third of the way in. And now just carve it out. And the Scandi grind and fine tip on this knife make this job real, real easy. No problems at all, okay? So that's that one. Now, I'll stand up, do chest lever cut. We'll put a point on the other end. All right, by the way, this is sugar maple that I'm using, so it's quite hard. This is a good edge test as well, so let's see. Put it in hand. The point of this is to check out the comfort and the control I have, and in reverse grip, feels actually very nice. All right, let's put a point. Wow, that bit in deep. Really deep. Just like a mora. All right, there's a point, and I'll say this, there's a little bit of uncomfortableness used from that beak right there where it presses into my hand, but once again, that may be just a symptom of the size of my hands. All right, now let's do some feather sticking. Okay, another one of the splits. Let's see what we can do with feathers. I think I'll work down this outside edge. Let's just see. All right, first one, nice. Sometimes the first couple don't establish well, but these are. It's all about the light touch to get started. You know, I'd say it works just like a Mora, but I'm actually using it or liking it a bit more than a Mora because of that grip. It's just comfortable. I don't have to hold on tight. It seems to fit my hand nicely. All right, I'm not making a full feather stick. I'm just doing a demonstration of the fact that this can curl and feel comfortable in the hand at the same time. So, yep, it'll feather. All right, now scraping. All right, a little bit of scraping. Same piece or another piece of maple. Using a bit of a birch bark to hold it on. You can see how mucky the ground is. Let's see if I can fuzz this stick a little bit. I think that's enough to prove that it will fuzz a stick up nicely. How about fatwood? Let's try that. My fatwood's getting all chewed to pieces here. I've got to have a nice clean edge for demonstration purposes, though, don't I? Oh, that should work right there. So the answer is yes. Does a great job of the fatwood. And now, how about the ferrocerium rod? Plant my hand this time. I think I'll do the reverse one. Let's see. No. That's better. Okay, it scrapes, scrapes. Regular wood, fat wood, ferrocerium rods. What more can you ask for it? Let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts for the Azonda Fix Blade Knife. Overall, my impressions for it. Number one, carving. Carving this thing really does excel at. That's what it is best at. I mean, it's very much like a Mora, but slightly improved in the handle. I actually very much like holding on and carving with this knife as compared to virtually any of my Moras. It's just, just that little bit better. Now, what about steel? Well, this is the hard thing for me to tell. I can tell you right now that it is still sharp, that there are no rolls, no dents, no gliss, gleaning, or like nothing shining off of the edge anywhere. Still sharp. 
Now, I didn't do a whole lot today with it, but I have been, actually I was using it quite a bit off camera before I even started this video, as that's why it's so dirty, of course. Uh, here's the thing about it. It's a budget steel. I'm not expecting this to stay sharp for a long period of time. Any sharper, any, if it stays any sharper than it is now for any more use, I'll consider that bonus. And the reason I say that is this is a great knife for someone to purchase because you're spending so little money on it, you can take a little bit of extra money and buy yourself some sharpening stones or whatever it is you want to use for sharpening. Because owning a knife and having a sharp knife is only half of the equation. You also have to learn how to sharpen that knife. It doesn't matter how good the steel is or how well heat, well heat treated it is. As long as it can last through the sessions you are using it for, carving whatever it is you're carving, then you should be able to resharpen it yourself in the field or at home. Super steels are nice, but eventually they dull and then you have to learn how to sharpen those. You're better off buying a knife with an inexpensive steel that you can learn how to sharpen. Not that you are going to mess it up, but if you did, what have you, what have you wasted? $16 in this case. And to be honest, I don't see that happening. This is still functioning very, very well. What that tells me is it's not a super steel, absolutely not, but it is a good budget steel. It's doing more than I thought it would for me. It's lasting longer. It's staying sharper. It will need sharpening. Well, when I get it home, I always sharpen my knives, either on a ceramic rod and a strop, or if I have to, I'll put it to stone. But more often than not, if you keep a knife sharp, you don't have to spend as much time sharpening it later. That's my thoughts on that. So that's what I have to say about the steel. No, it's not high end, but it's sufficient to the task. It's not breaking, it's not chipping, it's not rolling, it's not doing anything like that, but it will dull. And it, like all steels, it will dull, maybe a little faster than others. All right, that's everything I have to tell you about the Izonda fixed blade knife. I will put the links to where I purchased mine as well as the Izonda website you might have to search to find it on their website. Uh, I'll put that in the video description. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take the path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.